Welcome to the car guys. This week we're at the Geneva Motor Show. We're going to show you our favourite cars from the likes of Porsche, Aston Martin, Lamborghini, Ferrari, Rolls Royce and of course McLaren. So this is the new Ferrari 488 Pista. I mean, it's not dramatically different to the 488, really. I mean, it's a no, little bit more aggressive. front end, obviously, with the scoop down to the floor, is completely different. Mm. But, yeah, I don't think it's hugely different, is it? I think the wing is, is quite dramatic. That's, that's pretty impressive. It's not an ugly car. It's not ugly. It's, it's just not possibly as dramatic as it could be. Yeah. Oh, great. This is all quite interesting. So what about the interior, though? Is that completely different? I mean, interior is obviously we've got Alcantara. So here we are inside the 488 Pista, very much in the spirit of the Challenger Dale and the 430 Scuderia and the 458 Speciale. So it's stripped out. It's a shame, really. The centre console's just the same as the last generation 458 Speciale. Yeah. But you definitely want to get the old uh, racing harnesses for cars like this. Ah, but that's that's a nice touch, though. Four handle. Yeah. I think it's the rear where it starts to get quite different from the 488. So you've got you've got a much more aggressive wing coming through, quite a big angle of attack. It actually runs, you can see that through, the wing actually cuts through there. Like the uh, work they've done on the diffuser with these... Like, yeah, little extra fin. Quite nice. It's not, not hugely different on the bottom here. It's got some nice details. I think as with the 488, it suits having the um, skirts in a different contrasting colour. Yeah, definitely. It helps break up the body. I mean, you'd want that bad boy signed by all the uh, factory, wouldn't you? That would look amazing. Imagine how much it costs as an option to have that all as carbon fibre. Carbon fibre wheels, super light. Obviously, we better let uh, Bernie Eccleston check out the, yeah. the wheels. I don't see any evidence that it's a limited production run car, so I suspect that it won't be. I think there'll be quite a few of these made. So Jason, this is the Porsche Mission E Cross Turismo, a brand new concept from Porsche. Some headline stats for this. Three and a half seconds, 0 to 60. Crazy. A greater than 500 kilometer range. Uh, and it's actually quite a handsome thing. I think you'll agree. What do you think of it? Yeah, no, I think it's really nice. It's um, not quite the Mission E concept that we originally thought we were going to get, but um, as an extension of that process, this is uh, this is really good. It's really good. It's going to be that this is the Panamera replacement at some point in the future, I would guess. It's already been leaked on the internet, so everyone's seen the GT3 RS, but here it is actually in the flesh. What do we think? I mean, it's very subtle. It's not massively different to a normal GT3. I mean, obviously you've got the big wing on the back, but I don't remember it being promoted massively to That's this the thing, car, was there? Well, you had huge hype for the GT2 RS. You had loads and loads of people talking about they're getting their GT3s. So you had lots of that going on, and the, and the, the GT3 RS just seems to have sort of Snuck slipped in. in. Yeah, yeah, it's almost an afterthought. Everyone knew it was actually going to there was going to be one, but it sort of just snuck out with, with little or no fanfare. Yeah, very strange. A little bit more power, a little bit lighter, but I think all the headlines, unfortunately, have been stolen by the GT2 RS. Yeah, you can't deny it's a stunning car in this bright green. Yeah, I love the green. I mean, obviously, show me, show me. Please, look at me, look at me. I'm oh, so yeah. exciting. I'm a GT3 RS. I mean, it's, it's no doubt, uh, you know, a stunning car. It's obviously going to be incredibly technical. It's going to be fantastic on a track just been a bit overshadowed. I don't know, I'm not super excited to see it really. I'm a little bit more disappointed that there's no GT2 RS yeah. here. Um, Either that or we just don't know where to look for it. Could be that. Definitely in the good category. Oh, definitely good, yeah. Here we are in front of the Koenigsegg stand. 
uh, with the quite magnificent looking uh, Regera. Amazing, this car is absolutely stunning. In a beautiful, beautiful blue, it's got a two-tone blue. It's got this really clever trick as it's going round and round, it automatically opens the doors, closes the boot and bonnet and stuff, it's quite cool. So as you can see, it's doing that behind us, which is quite clever. See, see the way the Koenigsegg logo flips up to reveal the parking camera? Nice. I don't know if it's the colour or the car, but this kind of feels like one of the real stars of the show, I think. Oh, it's definitely a star of the show for me. I think I would remove some parts of my anatomy to have this car. Would you? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Here we are on the Lamborghini stand at the Geneva Motor Show. This is the car that we've not seen in the flesh yet. This is the new Urus. It's a, it's a challenging shape. I wouldn't say it's, it's pretty. It's very functional. It's quite angular. Boot space, not enormous. Interior space is actually pretty good, particularly compared to, say, an Evoque. Gotta admit, it does look striking in yellow. Well, controversially, I actually think it looks. Uh, I think it looks nicer in the grey. Really? Yeah, I think it just looks more subtle. This is a bit too shouty. Or in there, it looks boring yeah. in grey. Just looks like it could be an Audi. Could be well, an Audi Q5 in it that. It is an Audi. But look at it in this. I think. I think if you're going to go for a Lamborghini 4x4 slash SUV, I think you've got to go. Got to go loud or go home. I reckon. I really like the detailing that they've got here. Uh, this is reminiscent this has come through in terms of the interiors of Lamborghinis. I think it's quite nice details that you've got. I think the front of it generally is, is quite well resolved. It's a very well realised cabin. I mean, there's a lot of carbon fibre on this example. You've got lots of hurricane touches, but it's dominated by this enormous touch screen here, which is really nice. That is a great system there. It is, it is a very, very cool machine, this. I mean, I have to say, I sort of came here to the stand expecting to slag it off. Oh my god. I, what? I, I quite I what? sort of quite like it. I know. This is the new Lamborghini Buffermante Spider, the soft top, not hard top, soft top version of the Puffermante coupe that we already own. Very, very nice in the flat blue. Quite a nice looking car though. Beautiful engine noise, obviously, which is going to be fantastic. I mean, it's probably loud. This car is a hardcore race car, effectively, and I'm not sure by taking the roof off whether the dynamics are going to be a bit compromised. So it's a little bit more of a poser's car, I think, this one. Yeah. So what we have here is the Dodge Demon. 6.2 litre, 800 brake horsepower. Dodge Demon. What a thing. What a thing. Big f you to the environmentalists. <laughs> you got yeah. love it for that. 6.2 litres. 6.2 I mean, litres, 800 brake horsepower. I mean, it, could, it couldn't be less green, could it? I think maybe one or two miles to the gallon, if you're lucky, with full throttle. Isn't this the one as well that if you floor it, it will actually lift the front wheels off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hence the reason why they've jacked it at the front. Is it wrong to want a Dodge Ram? No. Why would it be wrong? What's wrong about wanting a Dodge Ram? I don't know why. I always want a pickup. And I'm seeing the stuff about the Raptor, and the Ram obviously is the daddy. Is that wrong? No, it's not wrong. It's perfectly acceptable. Or is it's, it very it's right? It's a utility vehicle that you can use for utilities. 2018 Mustang, inspired by the film Bullet. Look at that. That's really smart, look at that. Who isn't loving the bullet Mustang? I mean, come on. I would have one. Say what you like about McLaren, but I mean, one thing they are good at is shock and awe. And this Senna, this carbon body Senna, is stunning. Has about £300,000 worth of options on top of the £750,000 asking price. I mean, we're talking about sumptuous, beautiful carbon body. I mean, it's almost, if you're, if you're in the market, it's almost worth asking why you wouldn't have the full carbon body. 50% more of the, of the price would get you this. But if you're going to spend 750 hey, 
why not spend 1.1 million? McLaren, where do I get one of these crash helmets? I want one. A normal bodied 675 next to the carbon, I mean, I don't know, it would make the 675 look look plain and normal. Even more plain than it already looks in great. Yeah. No, it looks amazing in great. Everyone knows this. So here's the much talked about Senna in the flesh. This model's in a um, not particularly attractive blue and it has dull satin carbon on it. And I think it confirms what we thought in terms of how odd it looks. Why does that rear haunch look really unresolved and ugly but the one out there doesn't? Because this one definitely, this still to me, looks like a really overly complex, yeah. inelegant shape that just doesn't work. Maybe a gloss black might look a lot better, I think. But this colour doesn't work, not with the satin carbon. This really looks like the sort of base model, and I think that's why it doesn't do it any favours whatsoever. I don't think the colour's good. I think the satin carbon, as you say, dulls down the impact. Down Getting into the McLaren Senna, you immediately notice the benefit of having this roof cut out, because it makes it a lot easier to step into and then drop down into this incredibly functional cockpit. Big display, which is fine, but it's also they've also incorporated the the different mode toggles into this display, which does make it a lot easier for you to touch, actually. It's a lot more e easily accessible. Yes. Look at that. Proper Brazilian Senna spec Senna. Now that is special. Why wasn't that the launch colour? This, this has turned my head, I have to say. The biggest shock, really, of the show is, is this carbon edition, the carbon body. This is a properly beautiful, gorgeous Senna, and I never thought I'd say that. So this is a proper shock. I'd have this car, I'd take this car now, drive it out. I love it that much. New BMW M8. It's a pretty exciting looking saloon. Very sleek. Uh, so over my shoulder, you can see the Rimac Concept 2, which is the latest version of the Rimac Super Sports Car. Incredibly fast. You'll notice this car is not the smoking, burning Hulk as driven by Richard Hammond. This is the new Concept 2, which uh, looks pretty good. It's got all new, improved tech. Yeah, there's no doubting it's a very handsome beast. Rimac are proven in uh, the use of you know, electric motors, battery yeah. technology. Totally. They, are, they are one of the world leaders. And they've uh, taken what they have learnt from the Concept 1 and refined it and honed it. And now it's back here with the all new Concept 2 better in every way. Clearly a lot faster as well. Fit and finish and quality of the materials on this car are again a step ahead of the Concept 1 and they actually license out their battery technology and their motor technology to other, other car companies. Right, quick word Subaru, uh, you are selling cars, you are not selling dishwashers, alright? So just stop it, they're all white, they're all a bit boring looking, come on, get some excitement. Aston Martin Valkyrie brakes cover. Very, very cool looking thing. Obviously, no bugger's got one. There's hardly any for sale. So it's a little bit academic that it's here because we're not able to actually purchase one. No. But it does look super, super cool. It does look really nice, actually. It looks much better. Smaller, actually, a lot smaller than you expect it to be. I mean, proper, they, they reckon with this car that it is LMP2 competitive right out of the box. So you could take that car, drive it out of the pit straight at Le Mans, onto Le Mans, and actually be competitive. If really? not win, it's glass. New Aston Martin Vantage. Boring though, isn't it? Boring looking, isn't it? Boring. Yeah. It's a bit dull. Dull. It's just dull and boring, and those headlights, what the hell's going on there? They're just... It's very Mazda, isn't it? It's sort of like an MX-5. Yeah. I was going to say Hyundai, but... Ooh, that's, that's harsh. I mean, I love the size of the, of the V8 Vantage platform, but to me, I mean, just imagine that grill there, as pretty as it is right now, now imagine it with some dead pigeons in it. <laughs> Pigeons? Where are you going to be driving? Alright, a pheasant. Imagine that with a dead pheasant. We've still got the same door handles, look. Look at that. When the Vantage was first announced, I wasn't too complimentary on social media about the, uh, about the looks. So I, and I said I wanted to reserve judgment until I saw one in the flesh. Seen one in the flesh. Yeah. Still not that impressed, actually. This is where you get to see the car polishers in their native habitat. This one has the expression, the typical expression of, please kill me. Well, it's good to see a return to the Geneva Motor Show of Zenvu. Uh, they're obviously the guys that we saw with Super Veloce 
and uh, we're looking forward to going on a test drive on this, the new TSR S. It's a mean looking thing. It's got a wobbly rear wing. It's got a very wobbly rear wing. Not quite sure about that technology, but yeah, look at those pipes on that mother You see, you see that Kia stand over there? Oh yeah. That's in France. Pagani's showstopper here at the Geneva Motor Show is the Huayra Roadster. Hugely dramatic car. It's been a while coming, but uh, it certainly doesn't disappoint. I always thought this was a better looking car than the Zonda. Really? Yeah. Oh, I've always been a big Zonda man. This is definitely right up our street. This is the. Oh, Upper I love this Mare. car. <laughs> Quattrofolio. I don't know why. It makes me go all silly. Look at it. Look at that. Oh. So, this is a special Nurburgring edition. So, you've got matte paint, you've got lots of carbon fiber, even more than normal. You've got green clover leaves on them. Just looks amazing. I'm fairly certain that that, that plug that they've got there, I've got the same one on my streamer. The Hennessy Venom F5. Well, they've got the pedigree now, really. I mean, people do associate the fastest cars in the world with Hennessy. They do. The, the problem with the Hennessy before was that it always, it always just looked like a souped up Lotus exhibit. Well, it was. I mean, essentially, it was a stretched. They bought bodies from Lotus and then yeah. stretched them to, to fit in whatever crazy power plant they happened to be running that week. But this, this is a, this is a properly nice. beautiful body, isn't it? Yeah, it's really nice. Sort of quite a scarry looking. Yeah, kind of uh, front ends, very Corvette-y. Very nice, if they ever manage to fund it. We're here now on the rough stand, or roof, depending on how you pronounce it. Roof? Roof. Rough. 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 Rough stand. And uh, they're very beautiful SCR. SCR. Mm -hmm. This is a very impressive, their latest car is built on a really, really solid chassis platform. It's a very, very exciting car and we do hope to actually drive one at some point soon. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. This is a completely hand-built, from the bottom up car. It has its own chassis. Would we buy a rough though to add to the collection? Yes, of course we would. That was a very silly question. I think we probably would. Very silly. There are some really dramatic lines in this new Continental. But just look at it, really nice raking lines all around the back of the car. This interior is a huge step forward over the old model. I mean, look at that. That is stunning. Obviously, a lot of this quality and fitment's taken from the same level as the Molzan. But I mean, look at the quality of the leather, the upholstery, look at the way that the dash sweeps round. Yes, that's right, folks. That's crystal glass inside the headlights of this new Continental. This is a Bentley Benchega hybrid. What is the world coming to? This is a long wheelbase Mulsanne. It is amazing in here. Look at this. It's Bentley at its best, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, this is, the, this is the stuff. Nice curtains on the inside there, so you can have a little sleep. We're big Rolls-Royce fans, car guys, but uh, you can't you know, deny that the Molzan really is a stunning luxury car. Hope you enjoyed this video from the Geneva Motor Show, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, leave comments, and that notification bell when you know we've got another video coming. See you soon.